There's a quote from uh, one of my English teachers at Lower Marion named uh, uh, Mr. Fisk. He had a great quote that said, rest at the end, not in the middle. And that's something I always live by. You know, I'm not going to rest, and I'm going to keep on pushing now. There are a lot of answers that I don't have, even questions that I don't have. But I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep going, and I'll figure these things out as we go. Right? And you just continue to build that way. So that, I try to live by that all the time. I had a purpose. I wanted to be one of the best basketball players to ever play. And anything else that was outside of that lane, I didn't have time for. At, at what age did that goal become crystal clear? That I, made, I made that deal with myself at 13 years old. At 13 years 13 old? 13 years old. That's you the deal I made. crystal clear about it? Crystal clear. And where did inspiration come from? Um, the love of the game. The love of the game. The challenge. Like, I, I would watch Magic play. I'd watch Michael play. And I would see them do these unbelievable things. And I'd say, you know, can I get to that level? I don't know, but let's find out. Let's find out. You know, I had a summer where I played basketball when I was like 10 or 11 years old. And here I come playing, and I don't score one point the entire summer. I remember crying about it and being upset about it. And my father just gave me a hug and said, listen, whether you score zero or score 60, I'm going to love you no matter what. Wow. Now that is the most important thing that you can say to a child. Because from wow. there, I was like, okay, that gives me all the confidence in the world to fail. But to hell with that, I'm scoring 60. <laughs> from there, I just went to work. And I just wow. I stayed with it. And I kept practicing, kept practicing, kept practicing. I think that's when the idea of understanding a long-term view became important. Because I wasn't going to catch these kids in a week. I wasn't going to catch them in a year, right? So that's when I sat down and said, okay, this is going to take some thought. All right, what do I want to work on first? All right, shooting. All right, let's knock this out. Let's focus on this. Half a year, six months, do nothing but shoot. When I came back the next summer, I was a little bit better. I scored. Yeah, you know, it wasn't much, right. but I scored. 12, 13. And then 14 came around, back half of 13, 14 uh, years old. And then I was just killing everyone. What I had to do was work on the basics and the fundamentals. Well, they relied on their athleticism mm. and their natural ability. And because I stick to the fundamentals, it just caught up to them. And then my body, you know, my knees stopped hurting. I grew into my frame, and then it was game over. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Now, were you, were you always competitive from the day you were born? You were super competitive? Uh, competitive with things that I, I participate in. So, I, like, I'll put it to you this way. So, like, you know, basketball for me was the most important thing. So everything I saw, whether it was TV shows, whether it was books I read, people I talked to, Everything was done to try to learn how to become a better basketball player. Everything, everything. And so when you have that point of view, then literally the world becomes your library to help you to become better at your craft. So at 13 years old, I had a, uh, I had a kill list. And so, you know, they used to do these rankings, it was Street and Smith basketball rankings. And I was nowhere to be found because I was like 6'4", scrawny, like 160 pounds soaking wet. So I was like 57 on the list. And so I will look at 56, 55, all the way up to number one, who these players are. I, I got to hunt them down, right? And so that became my mission in high school, is to check off every other person, all those 56 other names, hunt them down and knock them down. So I would size you up and see what your strengths and weaknesses are. How do you approach the game? Are you silly about it? Are you goofy about it? Are you good at it just because you're bigger and stronger than everybody else? Right? Or is there actually thought and skill that you put into it? Right? And when I'd play, I'd play to my weaknesses. Dude, I was working on the things during those games that I was weak at. Left hand, pull up jump shot, uh, post game. Right? So I have a strategy. Yeah. What was really your work ethic like and for how long did you stay disciplined? I mean, every day, I mean, since, you know, 20 years. I mean, it was an everyday process and trying to figure out strengths and weaknesses. For example, jumping ability. Now, my vertical was a 40, it wasn't a 46 or a 40, mm -hmm. 45. Um, my hands are big, but they're not massive, right? So you got to figure out ways to strengthen them so your hands are strong enough to be able to palm a ball and do the things that you need to do. Uh, quickness, I was quick, but not insanely quick. I was fast, but not ridiculously fast, right? So I had to rely on skill a lot more. I had to rely on angles a lot more. I had to study the game a lot more. 
And, uh, but I enjoyed it though. So like from the time I was, I can remember when I started watching the game, I studied the game mm. and it just never changed. What does losing feel like to you? Uh, it's exciting because it means you have different um, ways to get better. There are certain things that you can figure out that you can take advantage of, right? Certain weaknesses that were exposed mm. um, that you need to shore up. But the hardest thing is to face that stuff. You got to look at the reality of the situation. You know, like for me, it's not, you know, you, you kind of got to get over yourself, right? And then after that, it's okay, well, why did those air balls happen? Got it. I didn't have the legs. So I look at it with rationale and say, okay, well, the reason why I shot air balls is because my legs aren't there. I go, well, next year they'll be there, right? I got to get stronger. You have to do the hard stuff and watch that game and study that game to not make those mistakes over and over again. You gotta deal with Face it. Face it. You gotta deal with it. Face it, learn from it. You know, it sucks to lose. Right. You don't wanna have that feeling again, do you? Right? So you gotta really study it, face it. And uh, not to say you'll win the next time you face it, but at least you'll, you'll give yourself a better, yeah. a better chance. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's an obsessiveness that comes along with it. You want things to be as perfect as they can be. Understanding that nothing is ever perfect. But the challenge is try to get them as perfect as they can be. Mm -hmm. And what can you do? It's in your control. So control what you can. I don't, I don't know if that's what you call the Mamba mindset, but how did you develop that? And well, when did it start? Uh, it started in, in middle school and high school. Because a lot of the kids that I was playing against were inner city kids. Yeah. And so you're looking at me as if, okay, this kid's soft. They felt like they could try to be physical or try to intimidate me and do all this other stuff, which they couldn't. Right, You're trying to attack me. How am I going to attack you? How can I mentally figure out ways to break break you down? How can I show you that no, I have the edge? And what would you do to mentally break people down then? One of the things I would do is well, everybody would be at the cafeteria, work, you know, eating and doing all sort of stuff. I just go back to the gym. And so that was my way of sh of showing them, <clears throat> you're not going to outwork me. Wow. I see a lot of players take vacations with other players that are close friends. And we'll oh, just take vacations just to take vacations or just hang out just to hang out. Like, I, I, I'm not, I never did that. But why it was a why choice. not though? Why, why, why didn't you do that? What, well, because when I retire, I didn't want to have to say, I wish I would have done more. I don't want that. I played games with the flu. I played games with 102 degree fever, man. And we had a game against Toronto in 2000. Um, and Vince was tearing the league up. Um, my back was jacked, jacked. So I would be in the layup line like, okay, there's a lot of days where you, know, you can rest and recover. Today ain't one of them. Your back can bother you any other day. That ain't bothering me today. We gonna, he gonna have to see oh, me today. You're playing against the Golden State Warriors. You're about to take your shot and then all of a sudden, boom, yeah. Achilles happens friend of mine, Nima, he says, I have no clue how the hell this guy did it. He went and hit the free throws and then you walked off the stage. How the hell do you tolerate that kind of pain? Uh, you know, I, I use this, I, I tell this example and I think this is the best way to explain it. Um, you know, you have a hamstring injury, you pull your hamstring really, really badly. You're at home, all of a sudden a, a fire breaks out in the home. I'm willing to bet that you're gonna forget about your hamstring, you're gonna sprint upstairs, you're gonna grab your kids, you're gonna make sure your wife's good, you're getting out of that house, right? And, and the reason is because the lives of your family are more important than the injury of your hamstring. And so when the game is more important than the injury itself, you don't feel that injury, mm. not at that time. So you go to the locker room, then one of the reporters says, but if anyone is gonna get through this, it's probably you, right? You put your head down and you say, oh man, right, and you have tears in your eyes. Yeah. What were you thinking in that moment oh, with all that pressure? I was thinking like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know, there's so many factors. There's the surgery that has to take place, the surgery has to go well. And then thinking about what that process of recovery is gonna mm -hmm. look like, it's a long one. Do I wanna do that? I don't, I don't, I don't know if I wanna do it, I don't know. You don't know if you want to do it or you don't know if you are going to be able to come back from it. Both. Oh, like, both I don't know them. if I can do it. I don't know if I want to do it. Got it. 
when I, I went in the trainer's room, my kids are in there, and you know they're looking at you and stuff, and I'm looking at them, and I'm like, you know, it's all right, Dad's gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. As a parent, you gotta set the example. You gotta set the example. This this is another obstacle. This obstacle cannot define me. It's not going to cripple me. It's not going to be responsible for me stepping away from the game that I love. I'm going to step away on my own terms. And that's when the decision was made that, you know what, I'm doing it. Yeah, you got to lead by example. As parents, you got to lead by example. If you want your kids to do whatever it is they want to accomplish in life, you got to show them. Mm. If you do the work, you work hard enough, dreams come true. You know that, we all know that. But hopefully what you get from tonight is the understanding that um, those times when you get up early and you work hard, those times when you stay up late and you work hard, those times when you don't feel like working, you're too tired, you don't want to push yourself, but you do it anyway. Um, that is actually the dream. That's the dream. It's not the destination, it's the journey. And if you guys, if you guys can understand that, then what you'll see happen is that you won't accomplish your dreams. Your dreams won't come true. Um, something greater will. Um, I think the definition of greatness is to inspire the people next to you. I, mean, I, I think that's what greatness is or should be. It's, it's not something that's, that, that lives and dies with one person. Mm. It's how can you inspire a person to then in turn inspire another person that then inspires another person. And that's how you create something that I think lasts forever. Yeah. And uh, I think that's our challenge as people, is to, um, is to figure out how our story can impact others and motivate them in a way to create their own greatness. What can I say? Mamba out.